Hi guys and welcome back, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make these s'mores brownies, let's begin. To get started on the recipe you'll want to make the base, for that you'll want to grab yourself a food processor and place in your digestive biscuits, then you just blitz these up until they are a fine crumb. Once you've achieved a fine crumb consistency you can then go ahead and add in melted butter and mix again until it's fully incorporated. It should go from biscuity looking to a much more of a wet sand consistency, this is what you're looking for. Then you can grab your 8 inch square baking tin which has been lined with parchment paper and should be deep sided and press the base into place. It may take a few minutes to get perfect but trust me you want that level, that layer to be very level and equal. Set aside until needed later on. Then you can go ahead and get started on the brownie. So into a bowl which is heat proof, place your butter and chocolate and melt them two together. Into another bowl, you can go ahead and add in your dry ingredients, passing them through a sieve first, just to remove any lumps that may be in the dry mix, as sometimes they can be prolifically lumpy. You can then go ahead and grab yourself a large clean mixing bowl and place in your sugar and egg yolks and whisk these two together for as long as possible on a high speed, just until they are roughly three or four times in volume. Once you've achieved that, you can then go ahead and add in your vanilla, mixing it very well as you want it to be fully incorporated before you do anything else with the mixture. Otherwise, you may not get the full flavour. Then over a medium speed, you can go ahead and add in the chocolate mixture, which is the chocolate and butter, and do this just so it's fully incorporated, and just keep mixing until it's all been fairly distributed. Then go ahead and add in the dry ingredients, and you can add them all in or add them in in stages, but I find whichever way you do will work fine. You'll want to use a metal spoon as the spoon is thinner than a spatula and that's what you're looking to do. You don't want to knock out too much of the air. Don't worry, it is normal for you to lose some, but not all of it. You can then go ahead and transfer your brownie batter onto the biscuit base that we made earlier on and get as much of that brownie mixture from in the bowl as you possibly can, being careful not to knock out any of the air as it's really easy to do once you're transferring it. Once it's in the tin, you can then go ahead and spread and level it out, and this will just help to ensure an even baking consistency. All the information you will need will be on the blog post, which will be linked down below. For the marshmallow layer, you can take a saucepan and place in your sugar, your water, and your glucose, and just mix them all together until they are roughly combined. It doesn't need to be perfect, as they won't all come together due to them being in their solid state rather than in their liquid state. Place on the hob and you'll want to bring it up to temperature. That temperature will be on the blog post link below. While you're waiting, place your gelatin leaves into some water. Into another mixing bowl, place your egg whites and whisk until stiff peaks consistency. Keeping your eye on the mixture as it'll go from looking soft peaks to stiff peaks very quickly. And if you take your eye off it, you'll regret it. Once you've achieved the stiff peaks consistency, you can then go ahead and add in the hot liquid mixture which has just come up to temperature and do this carefully over a medium speed being careful not to get this on your skin as it will burn just whisk until it's cool you're not looking for it to be hot while you're working with it then you can take a small saucepan or a pot and place in your gelatin which has been soaked in the water and your vanilla extract and just melt the two together until they are both melted and combined giving a quick stir to ensure that the gelatin is melted then you can add it into your marshmallow mixture, which should be called by this point. So once your brownies are baked and fully cooled, you can then top them with the marshmallow and you'll want to get as much of this marshmallow mixture from in the bowl on top of there as possible as it does help to balance the cheesecake. The marshmallow may be sweet, but it's not overly sweet. And the brownie is the same, but all the balance flavors balance together and work really well. Once the marshmallow is on there, you can spread and level it out to get it as smooth as you possibly can. It doesn't need to be perfect as we'll be toasting it, but you do want it to be pretty perfect. Once you've chilled it in the fridge overnight, so I do that for around six to eight hours, you can then go ahead and cut it up. For me, it's really easy to cut up if your knife is warm and then you'll and wipe it in between each cut and you shouldn't get a messy slice. I made eight portions but you could easily get nine from this if you really wanted. Look at the definitive layers that you have. You have the biscuit base, the brownie and then the marshmallow top. They, they really do stand out from one another. 
and then as an optional finish to make it more of a smooth you can go ahead and gently taste the marshmallow or cre totally cremate it it's really up to you i can't judge you for that But that's all for today, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more from me and I'll be back again very soon with another recipe, so join me then. In the meanwhile, don't forget to check out the description, there'll be a link to this recipe, a link to my blog and links to all my social media. But that's all for today, I hope you enjoyed. Bye guys.